Hi, my name is Melvin Wei. Welcome to my YouTube channel. What I'm showing here is the sterilization process by which I steam my potting mix after I buy it from stores so I don't get fungus gnats and spider mite infestations and so on. There's a lot of eggs in those uh, bags of store-bought potting mix. So if you just start growing things directly, you'll be in for a lot of unpleasant surprises. These are two Peruvian mangoes that I bought from the supermarket. They're smaller than the Mexican mangoes that they typically sell around here in California. And I can't wait to see how they taste. So basically, I've tried this before. And with the Mexican mangoes, the seeds are a lot bigger than this. So that's an advantage in my book. I want seeds that are easier to work with. Uh, normal sized mangoes just have very, very large seeds. So when it comes to plant seeds, it seems paradoxical, but the smaller the seeds are, the easier they are to handle and the more durable they are. Like with my three herbal series, Yerba Mansa, uh, Sweet Annie, California Goldenrod, those seeds were all tiny which I did earlier in 2017 so there was really no way I could damage them unless you know I pressed them against two uh, solid and very flat hard objects such as rocks or pieces of metal so these large seeds are very easy to damage I've tried this before actually with uh, Mexican mangoes and the seeds were larger if you're not careful when you're peeling off the seed coat you could easily break the um, leaves and roots that are already formed so it's kind of a atypical seed well normally for very small seeds you can't even see what's going on in there anyway so for this one it's a balance of using a lot of force to pry it open but not so much that you destroy things so they're very clean inside once you peel away the seed coat that gets rid of all the pulp and potential source of you know bacterial growth and infection and you know you peel away this brown you know what seems like a sheet of paper and underneath it seems dark brown um, you could interpret that as rot but there's no indication that I've seen that indicates these are unhealthy so I'm just gonna go with it and plant these in sterilized potting mix after I rinse them off you know keep them in a damp towel so they don't dry out in the sun I know a lot of seeds do poorly if you let them dry out prior to planting them, especially with fruit seeds. So that's just something I read. And I have a container named uh, Mango 310. So I have my seeds in here and I kept the towel wet and now I'm going to pack in some sterilized potting mix and put the seeds on, then layer on some more sterilized potting mix and keep it in this container where it'll get sunlight. I chose transparent container so I can know what's going on from the sides. So I don't have to dig things up to check them out. But essentially, this will be 100% humidity. It's relatively sterile, as sterile as can be. And I'll keep it on a heat mat and see what happens over time. So in the past, I tried a mango seed and you know I, I kept it on top of a DVR a set top box indoors and that provided a lot of heat you know high 30s and Celsius probably close to 40 this time you know in late winter it's been pretty cold so I've been keeping it on this heat mat and hopefully things will develop after a while you can see my other incubating bags for the series of herbs for early 2017 so 20 days later you know it looks a little cold out there uh, the sun hasn't fully hit this uh, balcony yet and we'll take a look there's been some promising developments you know things have turned green in there so I know a lot of uh, root systems and seeds you know they do turn green if they're exposed to light I don't know if they're actually photosynthesizing I mean there must be a point to all of that so I'm gonna say yes and 
at least there's some kind of metabolic activity going on in there, right? So if they looked exactly the same and were lily white and pale after 20 days or whatever, I'd be pretty disturbed. You know, I'd just give up or think that they're not doing anything. So it's day 35, and you'll notice at the end of the last episode, I put them in the sun because it's starting to approach spring and it's getting uh, hotter and hotter on that heat mat. You know, on some days, I don't have this documented here, but with the other series, those incubating bags of seeds were hitting like, you know, 40 something Celsius, 50 something Celsius. That's like some of the hottest temperatures that you would ever encounter. Uh, on land and air, you know, Death Valley kind of temperatures. So I didn't want my stuff to cook. Uh, typically seeds are underground where the temperature is very constant. So I figured that might be bad. So by now it's day 45. And this thing has been sitting with lots of exposure to the sun, although it's 100% uh, humidity. And we're going to take another look. So it seems uh, fairly promising. You know, there seems to be some kind of movement over time. And that seems to be, you know, the shoot system. It's trying to unfurl some leaves and go upwards. So a very long time later, it's uh, day 73. You know, this thing's been moving at a glacial pace. Uh, I've had other seeds that have already germinated and started plant series by now. And this seems to be very promising it has a shoot system at least for one seed it's kind of coming up it's kind of hard to tell what's going on in there and you know what belongs to which seed but you know there's activity it seems like this is ready to sprout above soil like it would in nature if seeds are planted that deep and everything's green because of the constant exposure to sunlight but it's looking healthy it, it looks like a functioning plant that can eventually turn into a seedling so I think that's the other one and uh, that's you know slightly behind but it's also doing pretty well so it seems like things are really looking up and I'm really looking forward at this point to growing like two mango seedlings I didn't want to do the transplant earlier because I was afraid that with a sudden change from a container contained situation with 100% humidity and higher heat during the day to plant it in a planter like this uh, things would go wrong so when this happened and the seed just fell out with any foliage or uh, roots attached I was pretty disturbed I'm like basically it's one down one to go and it wasn't easy to get everything out of the container so you know, having things upside down coming out like that was a bad sign. So you could see a fragment of a root at the bottom or what's left of the root system that broke off potentially. But I do seem to have one seed that's uh, relatively intact, no damage detected. The orientation's a little weird. Part of that's probably due to growing in a container and maybe it had something to do with my placement, you know, place these two kidney bean shaped seeds uh, side by side, parallel to the dirt surface. So you can see all these broken fragments, uh, foliage, you know, I think this is not going to do anything. Um, I'm not sure why it's formed like that, but it probably took in some water over time and expanded. So I just have fragments of the shoot system and a broken off root there. And I think that's a lost cause for the most part. I'll try to plant it, but, you know, I don't think it's going to go anywhere. That was a clean break. So as I was saying earlier, the seeds that are large like this typically are vulnerable to any kind of physical manipulations and... You know, this is a very vulnerable phase for the transplant. So I planted the one that seems like it's intact in the center. And for the rest of these uh, dismembered parts, I'll just scatter them around, plant them in the best orientation I can, and just uh, water and see if anything ever happens. There's still a possibility that they might um, continue 
and eventually regenerate, but you know, I'm not very optimistic. So I planted the root there. And I actually planted the seed with everything else broken off at the bottom. And I kind of forgot about it later. But we'll we'll get to that later. So anyway, I fertilized because I realized that with some of my other plant series, they were just taking a very long time in late winter and spring to get started. And what I'm doing here is uh, in tune with all my other plant growing series of the last year or two. I'm just fertilizing mildly. I'm adding a crushed men's health multivitamin that I eat myself every day to provide all the minerals and micronutrients that these uh, nascent plants might need and just a sprinkling of miracle Grow regular fertilizer that promotes vegetative growth. The reason I'm doing all this is because I realized that you know by sterilizing all the potting mix by steaming it you know perhaps I killed all the uh, beneficial microbes that are normally responsible for breakdown of nutrients release of nutrients in natural soil but this isn't natural soil anyway it's potting mix so it's mostly wood chips and things like sphagnum peat moss it's got uh, vermiculite spacers and you know little fertilization pellets of its own so you can see on day 96 I just watered the, uh, the foliage looked like it was dying so to make a long story short you know the foliage died it withered away eventually despite all the watering I did so at this point it's day 121 it's been a whopping four months since I started this project and I'm just excavating like an archaeologist to see what happened so here we see just the same case as we did with the other seed coming out of the container into the transplant it's just um, you know a nutrient store essentially for the plant with nothing attached so that means the root system rotted off uh, the shoot system withered away you know there just wasn't any connectivity um, between the roots and the shoots uh, they weren't performing their functions and I'm digging around and you know, I actually forgot about the seed at the bottom, the other one that had stuff broken off, you know, over a month ago already. So I'll go back in there and fish that out after watching this footage and realizing that I left something in there. But that's this failed experiment in a nutshell. It's actually my second attempt. And I'm pouring in some seeds. I'm doing a quick and dirty operation to get something else started hopefully very soon and if I'm successful in two or three weeks I'll maybe have a starter episode for a new plant growing series I don't want to keep this uh, valuable real estate unused so this concludes my second failed attempt to germinate mango seeds I do have a lot of failures going on behind the scenes that you never see in 2014 and onwards I tried germinating ginseng and it was never successful I had at least three different um, series so to speak of failure and I decided you know I only wanted to document success so I got into this uh, mindset where I only wanted to show you uh, successful things and thus I would do a lot of prep work and uh, failed series and never show you any of that so there were long uh, periods of time where you know there just wasn't a lot of content because things failed to germinate or grow so thanks for watching and please leave your feedback and suggestions on how to get this to work on my YouTube comments or go to my Facebook fan page uh, Melvin Way's YouTube channel